It's Patrick Hotzel from intensivecarethome.com, where we provide tailor-made solutions for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies at home, and where we also provide tailor-made solutions for hospitals and intensive care units at home, whilst providing quality care for long-term ventilated adults and children with tracheostomies at home, otherwise medically complex clients at home, adults and children, which includes BiPAP and CPAP at home, home tracheostomy care for adults and children that are not ventilated, home TPN, home IV potassium infusions, home IV magnesium infusions, as well as home IV antibiotics. We're also providing port management, central line management, peak line management, as well as sequence line management, and we also provide palliative care at home. We have also sent and we continue to send our critical care nurses into the home for emergency department bypass services. We have done so successfully for the Western Sydney Local Area Health District, their in-touch program. Now, today I want to talk more about why, especially cerebral palsy children need BiPAP sometimes at home. And if they do need BiPAP, why they need critical care nurses 24 hours a day. I can give you some real world examples from some of our clients, but also from the cerebral palsy website. You know, a lot of uh, cerebral palsy children end up with scoliosis and therefore their respiratory um, health is very compromised and breathing problems may arise and a lot of the clients that we've worked with over the years with cerebral palsy end up on BiPAP or on CPAP, predominantly on BiPAP um, but several uh, things contribute to the need for BiPAP including aspiration often right, uh, which is caused by the weakness or spas spasticity in the digestive tract muscles may also cause the breathing problems and the aspiration. Also gastroesophageal reflux, which then ends uh, often ends uh, up for those children having a fund application. Pneumonia is often caused um, because there's a, an unsatisfactory cough um, and it often is caused because uh, respiratory tract infections are often caused because those kids cannot clear their secretions and those infections can readily develop into a pneumonia. So how can that be managed? Once again, it can be managed with deep suctioning, for example. Some uh, kids need a nasopharyngeal airway, but that's not often enough. You know, deep suctioning is not often enough the tidal volumes when someone is on BiPAP or CPAP can be quite small. And with the small tidal volumes, the volumes that are going into the lungs, right? Um, that's the only way really that adequate ventilation is established and maintained, right? So I'll give you another example. For example, uh, one of our clients who's a child at home on BiPAP for cerebral palsy. So the client has a Glasgow coma scale of about seven uh, out of 15, which means uh, the client is neurologically um, very compromised and therefore also has issues clearing their airway. So a nasopharyngeal airway is regularly used to clear the airway. That means a nasopharyngeal airway is in inserted into the nose and then deep suctioning is often applied to clear the secretions. Furthermore, when BiPAP is on tidal volumes and minute ventilation is obviously monitored very closely, making sure that the tidal volumes are adequate for a patient's weight. And that's usually seven to 10 mils per breath, right? Seven to 10 mils per kilo. Right, which means if, if a client is 40 kilos times 10 mils, for example, that's 400 mils per breath, right, roughly. So in a clinical report we had from one of our nurses, you know, last week, all of a sudden the volume dropped down to 50 mils, which is not enough for a patient, you know, in general, not for a, a teenager in this case, right? So even though blood pressure was stable, right, the oxygen saturation of the client went down pretty quickly. And then our critical care nurses working with the client established a patent airway with a Goodell airway and a jaw thrust. Now, these are skills 
that only critical care nurses have by having worked in critical care, you know, for years and doing regular refresher trainings to have those skills. So that's how it's one, only one of the ways we keep our clients safe at home. But, but in many other situations where there, if there wasn't a critical care nurse 24 hours a day, this client would have ended up in the emergency department, potentially would have even died. You know, and we have evidence that whenever clients with BiPAP, tracheostomy, ventilation and so forth don't have critical care nurses at home 24 hours a day, they have often died. We know of at least four clients that have died in recent years at home where the NDIS or other funding bodies weren't funding the critical care nurse 24 hours a day. And clients passed away during times when critical care nurses were not present. And, you know, for anyone interested to, to dig deeper there, please contact us and I can give you more information and provide you the evidence with everything that I'm saying here. And please bear in mind, this is a client that doesn't have a tracheostomy. So you think that the airway would be easier to manage for someone without a tracheostomy. But the reality is that even someone on BiPAP can become unstable and can, can have an unstable airway at any given moment, especially when their neurological con condition is impacted and their Glasgow coma scale is seven out of 15. So also what we do and what I'm saying here, it's all evidence-based. So when you look on our website, intensivecarethome.com, there's the mechanical home ventilation guidelines that are evidence-based. And the mechanic, the evidence-based mechanical home ventilation guidelines clearly uh, suggest that only critical care nurses with a minimum of two years critical care nursing experience can safely look after a ventilated patient at home, adults and children. And they need to have a minimum of two years critical care nursing experience. That is all evidence-based. And the mechanical home ventilation guidelines are a result of 25 years of intensive care at home nursing in Germany and are also a result of uh, intensive care at home nursing in Australia since 2012, right? So the evidence is overwhelming. And clearly, if patients have died in the community in the past, and that is something that mustn't be repeated. And the NDS and other funding bodies must pro must fund what is evidence based, not what's not what's based on perceived and limited perceived limited funding. Furthermore, um, with intensive care at home, we are the only service provider in Australia in 2024 that has actually achieved third party accreditation for intensive care at home nursing. We are, we are provide, or we have built unique intellectual property that we are bringing into the community. Plus, we are employing hundreds of years of intensive care nursing experience combined in the community, because that's how highly skilled our workforce is, and that is unmatched of in Australia in 2024. Brings us in a position to look after the highest security clients safely, with the quality framework in the community in. Australia. Now, with intensive care at home, we are currently operating all around Australia, in all major capital cities, as well as in all regional and rural areas. We are an NDIS approved service provider all around the country, TAC and WorkSafe in Victoria, IKA in New South Wales, NIISQ in Queensland. We are a DVA approved service provider all around the country. We have also received, and our clients have received funding through departments of health, private health insurance, as well as public hospitals. We are also providing level two and level three NDIS support coordination, and we can help you and your family get the right funding for the right nursing care that you need. We have been involved from with the advocacy for our clients from day one successfully. Otherwise, we would not be in business. And I will post uh, towards an interview that I've done with our NDI support coordinator, Amanda Riches. And I will, you can have a look at the interview with Amanda below this video. Now, and if you're at home already in a situation like I just described with one of our clients where, you know, you have inadequate funding, inadequate support, right, in place, you're getting admitted to hospital or your loved one gets admitted to hospital all the while, and you know you you think your loved one is at risk of dying or you think you're at risk of dying please reach out to us urgently we can help you with all of that and if you are an ndi support coordinator and you're watching this and you're looking for nursing care for your participants 
uh, please reach out to us as well. Or if you're looking for funding for more nursing care and you don't know how to advocate for it, please reach out to us. We're also providing um, NDIS nursing assessments with our critical care nurses. And if you are a critical care nurse looking for a career change, we are currently offering jobs for critical care nurses in the home in Melbourne, Sydney, Brisbane, Albury, Wodonga, in Bendigo, Warrigal and Geelong in Victoria. And if you have worked in critical care for a minimum of two years, pediatric ICU, ED, and you have ideally completed a postgraduate critical care qualification, we will be delighted to hear from you. And because we are offering a tailor-made solution for our clients, which includes regular staff, our clients want to have the same staff coming over and over again because they are very vulnerable and it's all about building critical and crucial relationships and having regular and stable teams. So if you are looking potentially for agency work where you can sort of come and go, this may actually not be the right fit for you because we're looking to engage with you on a long-term basis and our clients want to engage with you on a long-term basis. So it's all about building critical relationships and longevity with our clients. Um, so please only apply to us if you're looking for long-term engagement. If you're an intensive care specialist or ED specialist, we also want to hear from you. We're currently expanding our medical team and we can also help you eliminate your bed blocks in ICU, in, in ED for your long-term patients or for your regular visitors. We're happy to help you take off the pressure the pressure of your ICU and ED beds, and in most cases, you won't even pay for it. And if you're a hospital executive watching this and you have bed blocks in your ICU, ED, respiratory wards, please reach out to us as well. We can help you. Lastly, if you're in the, in the US or in the UK and you're watching this and you need help, we want to hear from you as well. We can help you there privately. Once again, contact us at intensivecarethome.com. Call us on one of the numbers on the top of our website or simply send us an email to info at intensivecarethome.com. If you like my videos, subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular updates for families with intensive care at home and for families in intensive care. Click the like button, click the notification bell, share the video with your friends and families, comment below what you want to see next, what questions and insights you have from this video. I also do a weekly YouTube live where I answer your questions live on a show and you will get notification for the YouTube live if you're a subscriber to my YouTube channel or if you are a subscriber to our email newsletter at intensivecarethome.com. Thank you so much for watching. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehome.com and I will talk to you in a few days. Take care for now.